Romesha, tell me, have you ever made a CV? Honestly, just once, but it was not very good. <laughs> well, you should know, a good CV is your first chance to make a good impression on an employer. So it's definitely worth spending time and efforts on. So Dr. Shatila Tariq will guide you further on the subject. She graduated from KMDC in 1997. Then she completed her postgraduate and training from UK. Currently, she is working as a respiratory consultant in the United Kingdom. working in the UK as a respiratory consultant and I'm very honoured to be the president of KMDC Alumni Association. Today I will not only give you some guidance on building your CV but I will also touch on some facts of life that have to be kept in mind whilst making decisions about your career. I wish someone had alluded these facts to me when I was your age. Look at the bigger picture. Look where are we all heading to. At present, most of you are between the ages third and fourth of Shakespeare's Seven Ages of Man. So before you decide on your career option, you must bear in mind what are your priorities in life. Set your priorities right from the beginning and decide where all these sit in your priority list. Your family, your career, your social life, your hobbies, or your passion to give something back to the society. Don't be short-sighted. Also look at the ages 6th and 7th, please. Bear in mind whether you would be able to carry on the same time and level of work when you get older, because it will be too late by then to make choices again. Likewise, when it comes to your career choice, not just be focused on where you are now. First decide what do you want to be and where do you want to be and then map out your journey. It's like knowing first what destination you would like to travel to before you buy a plane ticket. You could be a dental service specialist, basic scientist, medical educationist, join pharmaceutical industry or the armed forces. But what we would strongly advise you against are any non-dental career or sit at home as a housewife. That's an absolutely no-no and I'll tell you why. Think how much you pay per year as a government funded or even as a self funded medical or dental student. Now compare it with any western country, for example UK. So in UK, if you are a British citizen, the medical or dental school fee on an average is, is £9,000 per year which is equal to 18 lakhs and 62,000 Pakistani rupees per year. For a non-British citizen, the fee is £17,000 per year for first two years, which is equal to 35 lakhs and 17,000 Pakistani rupees per year. The fee then goes up to £35,000 per year for the next three years, which is equal to 72 lakhs and some 50,000 Pakistani rupees per year. So think very, very carefully before you decide to leave the medical or dental career because you owe a lot to your poor country and its future generations. I recently came across this graph and again I wish that 
I had seen it before when I was in a medical school like yourself. So look at the beginning of the graph. There are two candidates or two students, a student A and a student B. They both started medical school or the dental school together. Candidate A was building up his CV right from the start. He started doing research, writing papers, built up his teaching portfolio, did lots of courses, passed several exams, gained some qualification. All in all, he was performing really well and by the time it came to applying for a consulting job, he absolutely outstaged Candidate B. Candidate B, on the other hand, was an average student. He passed his exams and was just going to going with the flow and did not invest much in his CV building. When it came to applying for the consulting job, it was just too late for candidate B as he cannot turn the time clock back and all of a sudden get a PhD degree or have published pa papers or gain a new qualification. So it's very clear from this slide as to who was going to get the job and who is going to shine in the field. So the message here is time is more precious than money. And the bottom line is start building your CV now. Now look at the basic structure of a CV. It begins with your personal information, followed by personal statement. It also includes your education and qualifications, employment history, research experience, presentations and posters, teaching experience, management and leadership experience, clinical governance, personal interest and any volunteer work that you might have done in the past. In the end, you might want to mention your referees with their contact details. CV is an excellent opportunity to help you stand out of the crowd in the eyes of a potential employer. So make sure you invest time and put in a lot of effort in making a really crisp CV. Now look at the content of each section of the CV separately. Your personal information should contain your contact details, your professional body registration, for example, registration with Pakistan Medical and Dental Council, General Medical Council, etc. If you are working in a foreign country, your employer might also want to know your nationality and visa status. In foreign countries, it's essential to have a medical or dental indemnity as well. Having a driving license is an added advantage to the employer, as it means that you could travel from one site to another if the job requires. Your personal statement is basically the first and the most vital part of your CV. It is a brief introduction of who you are, what are your skills and attributes, and where do you aspire to be in your career. It helps the employee decide whether you are a suitable candidate for the job. It helps you stand apart from other candidates. It should therefore be very powerful. In this section, you should include your details of your primary medical and dental degree, for example, MBBS or BDS, with your year of graduation and the name of your university. This section also includes for your postgraduate qualification, for example, FCPS, MCPS, MRCP, MD, um, FRCS, etc. Please also mention your distinctions in this section or any scholarships or bursaries that you might have been awarded with. In this section, 
list all your employments in a chronological order, starting from the current one. Mention your role, responsibilities and the skills used in your current job or any new skills that you might have learned or acquired in your present or previous jobs. Under research experience, you mention any research degree, for example, postgraduate certificate or diploma in research, a BSc, MSc, MPhil or PhD. Briefly mention your research project, what did you learn from it, what the skills you acquired and where did you do your research. Mention any research courses that you might have attended. In this section, mention your local, regional, national and international presentations and posters. Mention where and when you presented. Also mention if you won a prize. That will again help you stand out of the crowd. Under teaching experience, mention your teaching qualification, for example, Masters in Medical Education, PG Cert or Diploma in Medical Education. You can also show um, that you have attended teaching courses in the past. Include their name, dates and venue and also who organized them. If you have um, previous experience of teaching, for example, juniors, um, nurses, paramedics, medical students, then include it here. Um, it is very, very important to keep, get feedback on your teaching and also mention on your CV what sort of feedback you have received and um, how, did it, how did it help improve your teaching style. If you helped organize any exams, for example, FCPS exam, or medical, um, medical school exams, or any university exam, then please do mention it on your CV. Next section is management and leadership. Mention if you were a class CR, what was your role, what the skills you learned from this experience. Our alumni CR can mention it on their CV and we will be very happy to provide certificates to CRs who have proved themselves to be a valuable member of our team. Mention if you organized a rota at your workplace. Did you have a role in social clubs, sports clubs, hopes? Collect your certificates now. You can use them as part of, um, you can use them as a proof later on. Your journey only begins once you qualify as a medic or a dentist. You have to prove throughout your career that you're improving yourself continuously. This is quite important in any developed country, especially people working in the UK. So clinical governance is basically a systematic approach to continuously maintaining and improving the quality of patient care. It includes audits. Uh, if you have closed an audit cycle, that's quite valuable. Um, you can include any quality improvement projects in, under this section on your CV. Um, let's see what an audit is. So audit is basically when you, um, when you compare your current practice against a set of standards, for example, any guidelines, for example, any local guidelines and international guidelines for any disease management, for example, MI, or um, for, den for, a den for dentists, there might be any guidelines for any certain diseases, and then you compare your practice against those guidelines. You see what the difference is, and you make an action plan to improve your practice. 
once you have um, implemented your plan, you again um, repeat the cycle and compare your practice against the set of standard and see if you have made any improvement. This is the last um, section of your CV usually and it includes the, um, the names and contact details of your referees. Um, in UK it's usually um, three references that you require covering last three periods of your employment. So that was um, all about your CV. Now look outside the box. As per UK statistics, an average 75 year old person spends 21% of their entire life at work or career. And we remain fixed on this 21% for our entire life and spend so much of our time to ensure that we excel at our work and career. The point to consider here is as to how many of us look at the other 79% of our, of our life and go somewhere to improve ourselves as a person, as a citizen or more importantly as a human. How many of us do any courses to make ourselves a better person? Please do consider that as well. We do so much, invest so much of time, so much of money to improve ourselves as a professional, but do very, very little or nothing to improve ourselves as a whole, as a human. Personal development needs some attention from us, our, ourselves as well. The most important component is our mission in life. So you need to think now what you want to achieve in your life, what is your mission, and how do you want to be remembered when you're no more in this world. So personal development also include improving our relationship with other humans, believing in equality, self-awareness, recognizing your weaknesses and your strength. Try and improve your weaknesses and try and use your strengths in a better way. Accepting your mistakes openly and learn from your mistakes. Reflect on them to improve yourself as a person as an, as, and as a human. Be aware of your responsibilities and role in society. What? All these qualities and all these attributes help improve ourselves as a, as a person. So please do try and learn these skills as well. My dad always say that degrees of qualification without personal development are as good as a donkey carrying a load of books on his back. If your education has not made you a better person, then I'm afraid it's only a waste. Education without awareness and improvement in your personality is useless. So improve yourself as a person. You will find highly skilled and outstanding professional, but the most important question is, how many of them are good humans too? This is unfortunately a rare combination. And that's why we as a nation are where we are today. The choice is yours. 
think carefully, reflect, and make a sensible choice. I would again say think, how would you like to be remembered when you're no more in this world? Finally, um, if I want you to take one message home from this entire presentation, that would be that you don't have to be super intelligent to succeed in your career, but you have to be very honest in all aspects of life, hardworking, determined and dedicated. I assure you that no one can stop you if you have these qualities and the sky is the limit. Thank you very much for li listening. I am I'm very appreciative of your um, attendance and patience and I'm ready to take any questions. Thank you once again and enjoy the rest of your day.